After a bit of a break, we're back in a new year with a new episode. And to kick off 2022, we'll do it in style with a super cool artifact from the Skylab program. Yes, Skylab. If you're a child of the 70s or a particular and discerning type of space fan, America's first space station holds a special place in your heart and in your memory. Today's highlighted artifact comes directly from the personal collection of one of her crew members. And like all artifacts, it has a super interesting backstory all its own. Ready to take a look? To my friend Emily Carney of the Space and Things podcast, this one's for you. Away we go. Hello collectors and space fans, I'm Jim Franjone and welcome back for 2022's first installment of Taken Up Space, the place where space history lives and where every artifact tells a story, where we seek to preserve vintage artifacts, reveal their history, and in doing so, hopefully inspire some of you in the next generation of space explorers to take on pursuits relating to science, technology, engineering, art, and math. If you're as passionate as I am about the history of spaceflight or the preservation of space age history, be sure to click on the subscribe button and notification bell down below so that you don't miss out on a single episode. Patches. One of the things you'll find in almost any space collection are mission patches. Every single one of them an individual work of art and a visual representation of the crew and their mission objectives. Generally speaking, they're easy to collect and relatively inexpensive. They're readily found and readily accessible and in most cases for right around 10 bucks. But as with every collectible, there are certain types, variants, and production runs that can be more sought after by hardcore collectors. Today's artifact is one example. But in the earliest days of crewed spaceflight, they were released as commemoratives after the spaceflight, not actually worn on an astronaut's spacesuit. In fact, the first American mission patch to adorn an astronaut's spacesuit didn't occur until 1965 with the flight of Gemini 5, crewed by Gordon Cooper and Pete Conrad. Right out of the gate, patch art, like aircraft nose art, stirred its own controversy. But that's a story for another episode. The point here is that the mission patches are very cool to collect, and their artwork forms an indelible link to the missions they represent. Think about it. Could you really think about Apollo 11 without its mission emblem coming to mind? Hardly. It's iconic. So much so that they didn't even need or want to have their names put on it. For this installment, we're going to take a look at one patch that holds a very special place in my personal collection of space-related artifacts, and it's definitely not one of the $10 mass market types. For starters, this patch, representing the second crewed mission to the Skylab space station, is one of the beta cloth variety. We'll talk more about what that is in a moment. Second, it's boldly signed in ink by all three crew members on the flight. Commander Alan Bean, who also walked on the moon during Apollo 12, science pilot Owen Garriott, and pilot Jack Lausma. And lastly, it comes directly from the collection of one said crew member. In this case, that's science pilot Owen Garriott. It found its way to me, care of a fundraising auction hosted by the Association of Space Explorers, or the ASC, a number of years ago. The emblem art depicts an adaptation of Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man to represent the mission's human physiology studies, and a backdrop consisting of a half-Earth, half-Sun combination to represent the Earth's resources and the solar observation components of the mission's flight plan. The red, white, and blue color scheme? Well, this was an American space flight after all. It's definitely eye-catching. But back to that question, what is beta cloth and what makes it so special? In short, beta cloth is the material that adorns the outermost layer of the Apollo A7L spacesuit. So this variety of patch was produced and printed with the potential to be stitched on an actual spacesuit for mission use, as seen here on Neil Armstrong's moon suit. But beta cloth's genesis goes back to one of the darkest days of the Apollo program and human spaceflight history in general. On January 27, 1967, America's first three Apollo astronauts, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee were tragically killed during a ground test when a fire, fed by pure oxygen, swept through the cabin of their locked and pressurized Block 1 command module. The toll was unimaginable. Most who were there will tell you that we likely wouldn't have made it to the moon and back had it not been for the lessons learned as a result of the fire, a sentiment most acutely experienced and often expressed publicly in interviews by Fred Hayes of Apollo 13 fame. He's convinced the collective improvements enabled their own survival when they were met with an unexpected explosion within their service module on their way to the moon. As highlighted in the letter accompanying this artifact, 
The Apollo 204 review board recommended that non-flammable materials replace combustible ones wherever possible. Nylon cloth in the spacecraft and in the suits was replaced by beta cloth, a substance developed by Frederick S. Dawn's research team in conjunction with the Dow Corning Company. Technically called beta silica fiber, it was a different material than that used in trade name fiberglass products. Beta silica fibers could be spun into thin threads and then woven into fabric with a melting point of over 650 degrees Celsius that would neither ignite nor produce toxic fumes. As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of all invention. Sadly, it was a necessity learned in a very hard and brutal way, but that's the backstory of how we came to this unique type of mission patch. Now, while not all autographed and from personal collections of an astronaut, I do have a complete set of these types of patches for all flown missions, including the three crewed Skylab missions and the final flight of Apollo on Apollo Soyuz. Not all behind glass when sharing them with family and friends and children and scout troops. The tactile nature of handling this cloth has a way of connecting with people and connecting them to the story and to the experiences. With kids in particular, you can see the synapses firing. Now normally we'd be wrapping up right about here, but for today I'm going to offer up a little bonus only because it's so very cool and it relates directly to the mission patch we just looked at. This here is a modern day reproduction of a patch that was produced in extremely limited quantities back in 1973 when Bean, Garriott, and Lausma were in orbit aboard the Skylab space station. It was a spoof created by and for the wives of the crew. Vitruvian man was replaced by a woman, and the last names of the crew members were replaced by the first names of the wives, Sue, Helen Mary, and Gracia. Prior to liftoff, the wives had arranged with supporting ground crew members to place stickers bearing the revised emblem within lockers and compartments throughout their command module. On orbit, when the crew would open up one of these storage units, one of these modified emblems would periodically float out in zero-g, giving the crew member a good laugh and a nice reminder of home. It even adorned a vehicle they used to greet the crew upon their return to Earth. And as we can see here, with a little wink and a nod, there's even a reference to the Gemini 5 patch. This patch is super cool in and of itself, but this one in particular bears the signature of none other than Sue Bean on the reverse side, making it something that I truly treasure having in my collection. If you want one of these for yourself, there's a link below to Amy Bean's Moonwalker Daughter webpage where you can pick one up. While you're there, check out some of Amy's blog posts where she writes about growing up as a child of Apollo. She's terrific, and her thoughts and her writing on the topic are especially unique and insightful. After all, how many of us can claim to have had a father who walked on the moon? And that's a wrap for today, my friends and fellow space enthusiasts. I hope you've enjoyed seeing these artifacts and learning some of their backstories just as much as I've enjoyed sharing them with you. If space patch art and collecting patches is something that interests you, I'd highly recommend checking out Tim Gagnon's website. I've provided a link below in the description. Tim's art is quite literally out of this world, as many space shuttle missions and ISS mission patches bear his work. Definitely take a peek. And if you love Skylab as much as me or Emily Carney of the Space and Things podcast, for which there is a third link featured in the description below, I promise I'll be sharing more artifacts from that program, including items that came directly from astronauts themselves, and even things relating to the never-flown Skylab rescue mission. With that in mind, I hope you'll subscribe and enjoy seeing those future episodes as well. But until then, thanks a million for tuning in today. If you've enjoyed this installment, please give it a thumbs up down below and feel free to let me know your thoughts by dropping me an email at jim.takingupspace at gmail.com. Until next time, collectors and space fans, keep your heads held high and keep your eyes on the stars. Three, two, three.